Hi guys, Len Suprock here. Today I'm going to show you how to make books using cereal boxes. We're going to make two kinds of books. We're going to use contact paper and then we're going to use acrylic paint and stamps to make the other book. We need scissors, a sharpie marker, and a ruler for this project. We'll need some other things along the way, but I'll show you those as we go. I cut one out already, this cereal box. This is the front. And you want to make sure the edges are nice and smooth and straight. And here's a box that we didn't cut apart yet. You're going to take the cereal out and either eat it or put it away. And then you're going to flatten out this box. You want to do that by opening up the top and opening up the bottom and then pressing down flat. This will be better to cut the edges out off or the sides and the bottoms off because all we really want is the front and the back. For each cereal box, you'll get two books. They may be very different in sizes depending on the size of your cereal box, but that's okay. So you got the front cut out and we've speeded this up a little bit. Please don't cut this fast with your scissors. All right, and here's the back. So we're going to get rid of these things that we don't need, all the cut apart cardboard. And we're going to start by taking the front and folding it in on itself. You want the outside of the cereal box to show. You want the, the plain side on the inside. So fold your cereal boxes as such. And then you're going to use a Sharpie marker. I like to use the edges of these markers because it's really easy to handle and they press down very firmly. That makes a good crease for your book. You can do it a couple times just to make sure it's nice and creased. And then take the back of your book, your cereal box and then fold it again like so. And then do the same thing. Come, come over with your marker and just press that down very, very firmly. Open it up and then press the inside very, very firmly. That gives a nice crease. It's easy to open and close your cereal box book. So how we're going to begin is by doing a book that we're going to paint with acrylic paints. You're going to want to paint the side that has the colorful cereal um, advertisement on. You want, to, you want to take a little bit of acrylic paint and I'm going to use a gray color. And then I'm going to get a brush. Later I'm going to get some stamps and some other paint. But another thing we need is some sandpaper. This is a shiny finish. So we want to make that a little more dull so it holds the acrylic paint nicely. So I'm going to begin by taking my 150 grit sandpaper or any grit sandpaper that you have and just lightly rub across the entire part of this cereal box. You're going to want to do the front and the back and we'll speed up in fast motion just to show you quickly how we're going to do this. But in real life and in real time, take your, take your time and sand it slowly. Make sure you cover every part of it because you're going to want to paint on top of this cereal box when you're finished and the paint will stick to all the areas that were sanded. So get rid of all those crumbs and sandy pieces. Set your book down and open it up. You're going to want to paint that whole front and back that you just sanded with some acrylic paint. I just squeeze a little bit on here, squeeze a little bit on my brush. And I might have to go back and get a little bit more onto the brush. It's going to really soak it in. So we're going to go in fast motion and get it finished. But you all take your time when you do this in real time. You can add a little bit more paint if you need to. Cover the area completely. Try to get rid of all the extra squigglies and streaks by moving the paint up and down and evenly. Once you do that, you're going to have to let it dry. And then you're going to come back and give it a second coat. So let it dry for a couple hours or overnight. Come back, paint it again, let it dry. So now I have a stamp. I have a dragonfly stamp and I'm going to use a little bit of this gold shiny paint from Deco Art. Put a little on my brush and I'm going to brush it onto the stamp. Now you may have different stamps that you'd like to use. That's perfectly fine. And you might have different color paints that you'd like to use, and that's perfectly fine. I just happen to like this dragonfly stamp, and I think shiny gold would look nice on this gray painted finish. 
It's a little too big to stamp on a stamp pad, but if you had a stamping pad and smaller stamps, you could do that as well. Okay, I'm going to place my stamp down and then I'm going to firmly press down on my stamp to make sure every part of the stamp is touching the book underneath. When I lift it up, I have a perfect little dragonfly. I like this a lot, so I think I'm going to put a few more butter or dragonflies stamps onto my book cover. If you don't want to stamp stamps onto your book cover, you may also get a paintbrush and some other acrylic paint and you can go ahead and paint some pictures, maybe of a house, maybe of your dog, maybe of some sunshine and some flowers. It's totally up to you. Paints are fabulous. They work really well in this project, no matter how you use them. So what I'm doing now is going to put this stamp down onto my cereal box book and I'm going to be putting the stamp on the back side of my book right now. So that'll be the back part of my book when I open it up. And I want two dragonflies on that book as well as on the front. So I'll have four, one, two, three, four, four dragonflies in all. Now when you're finished with your paintbrush, always remember, wash the paintbrush with soap and water so it doesn't get dry and sticky, and you can use your brush again. Perfect. You're gonna let this dry now for a little while because this gold paint is wet. So leave it sit for a couple hours or overnight. Now I'm going to come back and do another book. This time we're going to use contact paper and we're going to cover our cereal box uh, with car uh, contact paper. Contact paper has a front and a back. When you peel it apart, you have a vinyl piece that's very sticky and then you have a, a clear piece that you can throw away. What I'm going to do is take my book and lay it down onto the contact paper on the clear side and my book is going to go face down so that the colorful part of the book, the cereal box, is going to be down flat against my contact paper's plain side. Once I have that laying down, I'm going to take my ruler and I need a little bit of an edge. I don't need all this contact paper, so I'm going to mark the contact paper about an inch and one half beyond the cereal box. You can't see on the screen so well the top that I'm doing right now, but an inch and a half above the cereal box, just put a little line all the way across the top of that cereal box. Then I'm going to come down the side and do it again. An inch and a half out, I'm going to make a little mark. And I'm going to keep doing that all the way down. Whoops! If this happens, it's no problem. You just realign your cereal box and keep on going. All right, so an inch and a half away, I'm going to mark all the way down the side. And then I'm going to come around the other side and I'm going to go an inch and one half out and mark, make another mark, an inch and a half out and mark all the way down that side. I'm doing this rather quickly. You can take your time and do it. it. It would go just as well if you took your time doing it and if you went quickly. So if you don't have anything else to do or any place else to go, this is a nice project to work on that you could take your time through all the steps and have a really good job when you're done. So I'm going to remove this cereal box and I'm left with all these dashes and dots that I made, all these little lines, and I'm going to collect, connect them with my marker all the way down one side and come around and where the cereal box top would be. I'm going to come all the way down and connect the dots on the top. And I'm going to connect the dots where I have them marked for the bottom of the cereal box all the way, make a line all the way through the dots in the marks. And then the last side, I'm going to come down and do the same thing. 
I'm going to come all the way down. And some of my some of my uh, dots and lines may not line up, but most of them will, and that's okay. Connect them in a straight line to the to the bottom. Okay, so then I'm going to cut along the line with my scissors that I just marked. I'm just going to cut right over these lines and get rid of that extra contact paper that I don't want. And then I have a perfect size to use with my cereal box. So I'm going to put the, um, just do one more measurement there. I'm going to take a look at how that all fits on there. Equal sides on all sides. I'm just going to do a little trim because it's uneven. I missed that before. So now everything looks good. Double checking. So what I'm going to do at my corners then, and I apologize, you can't see my hand at the top, but I'll bring it down here. There you go. And you're going to take the corner of your cereal box and you're going to draw a line all the way to the end, to the corner of the outside edge of the contact paper. You're going to do that on all four corners. Take your marker and draw a line from the cardboard all the way through to the end of the contact paper. And then that's going to allow your sides to lay flat and then your bottoms as well to lay flat on your cereal box. So what I'm going to do is just cut all the way to the end of the line that I marked. Just cut it right to where the marker stops. And then open it back up. I'm going to start to peel a little bit because it might take a little while getting that to come off, but just work at it and it'll peel away and then carefully pull that back piece away from the sticky contact paper that's the vinyl that's on, on the other side. Because then once this comes off, you'll stick that onto your cardboard cereal box. So you might, might get it stuck a little bit. You might need a little bit of help at this point. Maybe some extra fingers from mom or dad or from your brother or your sister. So just pull evenly and all the way off. And you can discard that piece, throw it right away. So now I'm left with the sticky part of the vinyl contact paper. I'm going to take the colored side of my cereal box and lay it down flat onto the sticky paper. Be very careful. You want to line your cardboard up with the very edges of where you cut the diagonals at. You rub it on and make sure it's stuck really tight. And then I'm going to pull down the top part of the contact paper. And then I'm going to add another little line. See, I don't need that little triangle that's at the edge, and I won't need it at the other edge. And when I flip the, the cardboard over, I won't need the bottom triangles either, and I'll show you how to cut those away. They're, they're just extra pieces we don't need. And it's an easy way to mark them and cut them after you place the cardboard. Okay, so now just bring that sticky part right down over the top of your book. And try to keep it as even as you can. I know it's very sticky, so it might be a little bit tough, but once you get it down, smooth it all out. And then I'm going to the other part of the book, the, the bottom part of the book, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark that line to get rid of that triangle because that's an extra piece and cut it away. And take my marker, mark along the edge there to, of the triangle, and then cut it away. Okay, so I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm just going to pull that down and stick it onto the cardboard. Try to keep it smooth and press, press it down, rub it. And then you're left with the other two sides. I'm going to just bring them down and over, press it down. Now again, you see I have extra contact paper that I really don't want. And we'll take care of that in a minute, just like we did before. We're going to get rid of that triangle. Okay, so after it's all pressed down, you just want to pick up your scissors. 
and snip the excess triangle right away. You don't need to mark it with a marker because it's right there. Just snip that extra triangle away. And get rid of the sticky pieces. You don't need them unless you want to use them for another project. And now I have my book and it's all smoothed out and I've folded at the crease again. Give it another firm with the marker. Just go down firmly and press and you give it a nice crease. We can get ready to put some papers, some pages, on the inside of our cereal box book. I'm going to take a few sheets of this gray colored uh, computer paper. It's just regular paper. Um, I have some white as well. I'm going to take maybe five sheets or six sheets and then I'm going to stack them on top of one another. And then I'm going to fold them in the middle. These will go inside our cereal box books. I use the marker to make a crease just like I did with the cardboard. And I'll take this stack. You can put more or less pages in your book and you can use art paper, tablet paper, graph paper, computer paper, any paper really that you'd like to use. I'm going to put the gray inside my dragonfly, my gray dragonfly book. And it, you might also see in your books, like I do here with mine, that the paper is a little too long for the book. That's no problem. I'm just going to line it up and cut with my scissors, get rid of the excess paper. I might have to come through and trim a little bit to straighten it all out. Yeah, I didn't cut very straight, so I'll take my paper out and I'll just snip off that edge so I could make it all even. Good. I'll put the papers back in my book and I'll do the same for my contact paper cereal box book. Again, these pages are a little bit too big and they're too big on the top and they also come out the side. So I'm going to take my marker and just make a straight line where the paper is too much. I'm just going to trace the book's edge onto the paper and then take the paper out and cut that extra off along the line. It makes it easier to see and straighter to cut when you have the line. So it fits nicely in that book. And get rid of the extra papers or use them in another craft. So sticking out just a little bit, so I'll cut a little bit more off of that edge. You might like yours sticking out a little bit, and that's okay. You can leave the paper a little larger if you'd like, but I cut, I trimmed mine up a little bit more so it fits inside. Okay. Now, how do we put that paper? in that book and keep it there. Well, there are a couple different ways we can do it. I decided that for me, the easiest way would be to use rubber bands. I open the book and open my papers to the middle. And then I take my rubber band and I just stretch it out, bring it on the inside of the book and the paper so that they hold each other together. Very easy and your book will stay together with that rubber band. Some people will sew their book in with a needle and thread and they'll make some holes and go back and forth along the crease with thread and a needle, but this works for me. I like, this is very easy. I like to do it this way. The thing that we would like to do is put a clasp on your book. That keeps it closed. Um, I have an ex example of one that I did here with the contact paper. I sewed two buttons on there and I used 
a hair band actually. You can use another rubber band or you could use just some simple string or ribbon. But a hair band really looked nice, I thought, and went on pretty easily. So there's your book clasp on that one. I'll show you how to use buttons and put your buttons onto the dragonfly, the painted cereal box book. What we're gonna first do is figure out where we want the the buttons to be. Uh, and then of course what we're going to use to clasp it with. And I do have these hair bands that I that I got for ponytails. Um, like I said, you can use a rubber band or you can use string. And then you just get two buttons. You can have them match like I do, or you can have them different. Another marker, and then a blunt tip needle. This needle is not sharp at the end. Um, I like it because then you don't get stuck with it and it works quite nicely. For thread, you can use a wax thread. You can even use something like dental floss. It's a lot smaller, but that works like thread. Or you could use string. Or you could even use some thin or small uh, ribbon. I think I'm going to choose the string and clear this out of the way. And, and the first thing I want to do is determine where my buttons are going to go. So I need to get the rubber band or the hair band, whatever I'm using, and place it so that it's equal on both sides. I don't know if you can see that. It goes down to equal places on both sides of the book. It's important that it's equal because the buttons will sit in equal spaces then on back and front. I'm going to take a marker and on the inside of the hairband, I'm going to place a little mark. So you see that? That's at the edge of where the band would go around the button. Then I'm going to take my button and I'm going to line the little holes up on that line. And then I'm going to make two additional marks by going through the button holes with the marker. So you can see two dots there and I'm going to do it on the back side as well. So now I know where my buttons will be placed on both the front and the back. Now I'm going to have to make some holes where those marks are. So I'm going to take my blunt tip needle and I'm going to work through making holes in the cardboard. It's a little tough since it's not a sharp needle. But eventually you break through and you put the needle through both marks or both holes. Once you do that, Place your button over the holes and come through as so with the needle and thread. I'm going to pull all the way out and then I'm going to put the needle back in through the other hole and pull. Make the thread come all the way out. And on the inside, I'm going to tie those strings together so that it doesn't pull apart. I'm going to do that in a double knot before I come back through the other side and come through the buttonholes once again. So I'm going to go back out through the hole, pull the thread all the way out front. It might stick a little for you. And then go back through the hole to the inside once again and pull, pull, pull. Oh, there you go. And then tie the second knot. And I just slide my needle underneath the, the knot that I made before and make a loop and pull tight. And then I could cut off the excess string. So once the first side is finished, you have your button attached snugly and securely, you're going to want to turn your book over and you're going to want to get the other button on the back cover of your cereal box book cover. You're going to do the same thing that you did on the front side with the needle in the, in the string. So I'm going to come through the hole and all the way, almost all the way through with my string, just leave a little 
on the inside so I can tie a knot later. Come back through the hole with the needle onto the inside cover and then pull. I'm going to tie the knot and secure the button. It's a little bit slippery, got away from me here. Well, third time's a charm. Pull that string, come around the loop, and then pull tightly. Good. I'm going to make another knot. We're going to try to make another knot. Then I'm going to take my needle and go back through to catch the button hole, pull the string all the way out, back through the hole and onto the inside once again. I'll just tuck the needle underneath my original knot to make the final knots. Snip away the excess string, and there you have a button on the front and the button on the back. Add your band around the buttons for closure, and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed making your cereal box books today. I had a lot of fun. Happy creating!